So, all right, let me let me uh, let's travel back in time uh, to 2006. Was it 2006 when you did this book? Uh, yeah. Uh huh. I think it might have come out in 2007, like January or something like that. But yeah, 2006 is when I remember I was working on it, putting it together. Yeah. And you just had to go and scan in all of your old King Cat comics. Uh no, I just took all the original art I had and um. I like went through all, well, first I went through all the zines and I like chose which stories I wanted to reprint. And uh, um, and then I just went down to Office Depot. I was living in San Francisco at the time, the Office Depot on Geary. Hmm. And uh, um, photocopied all the artwork. So I just sent um, like photocopies to D&Q and then they scanned them and did all that stuff. I didn't know how to do that stuff back then. Oh yeah, you didn't even have a scanner back then, did you? Well, I had a scanner, but I didn't feel comfortable like trying to make you know stuff good enough for a book out of it. So I remember I I just had all the photocopies and I cut them down to size, and uh, you know I'd go through because there'd be like little xerographical artifacts on there, little glitches or you know little specks of stuff, and I sat because of course I also had like bone crushing OCD at the time, so I sat with like my little brush and whited out all these microscopic dots that you couldn't even see really with the human eye but like my OCD I could see them and then I uh, packed up all those pages and just sent them off to D&Q and they use those to scan and stuff I mean my my work is so simple that it like using a photocopy mm -hmm. as the master really doesn't matter you know and was, was that the first book you ever did was King Cat Classics no, that what with D and Q? Well, just in general, what was the first? Oh no, oh, my first well, first book was well. I mean, my first books. I did a couple of books in Europe. Yeah. I did a book with uh, Bulb Comics, which was like a kind of little best of King Cat thing, and then did a uh, book with Reproduced in Berlin. But that you know they were slim volumes. It was kind of like a real basic introduction to King Cat or whatever for those different countries. And then um, a couple of years later, I did Perfect Example with High Water. So that was like the first book book. The, the foreign editions, did they put those together or did you? Uh, they did. I mean, I like did, I re-lettered them, you know, and I drew um, for like for the uh, German book, I drew a new cover and stuff like that, color cover and, um, uh, but, I don't even remember. I don't think I even chose the stories. I think they chose the stories and then I, they sent me the translations and I re-lettered the, um, re the artwork and sent that off to them. They put it all together. So those were the first two. That would have been like 98. I think those two came out. Bulb did two editions. They did a French language edition and then an English language edition of that one. Do you have sending the first little, little book collection. You wanted D and Q to publish your work back then, didn't you? Because of Julie Dusay? Oh, uh, I didn't really think about it. I didn't really think um, publishers would really that interested in publishing my stuff. I mean, I don't. I don't think they were. Uh, I mean, Chris Oliveros later told me that he was interested in publishing my stuff, but he always just thought I'd say no. He thought I was like you know such a, like a hardcore DIY guy or self-publisher or something that I'd say no or that I wasn't wouldn't be interested in. Mm -hmm. and, um, uh, it wasn't until Tom Devlin started High Water you know he put out the first couple books which was uh, Tiny Bubbles by James Kachalka and mm -hmm. um, Queen of the Black Black I think by Megan Kelso. I think those were the first two and so and I knew Tom just because he worked at Million Year Picnic in Boston and so and that's where I did like my first signing and stuff and so I knew he liked my stuff and I had just published uh the two issue thing that made up perfect example and I and that's when people were like starting to talk about book graph the graphic novel or whatever you know and I thought well here's like a 72 page comic that could be like a little book or something it was one of my, I always say it was one of my cup, two moments of gumption I ever had, you know, and I, and I called Tom up and said, now that you're doing high water, would you be interested in doing a book of this? And he said, yes. And, 
And then with D and Q, um, perfect example is out of print, it sold out pretty quickly. And I knew Tom didn't have finances or whatever to bring it back into print. And I really wanted it to be in print. And that's when I, I approached Chris Oliveros at that time and asked him uh, if he wanted to do a reprint of it. And it, he actually wrote back and said that he, they were in between book distributors at that point. So weirdly, they were actually focusing more on pamphlet comics at, and during this weird brief like nine month period in like 2005 or something. And so he suggested, and that's like Kevin Heisinger started working with at that point. He did that little magazine or else, you know? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was like, their suggestion was to do like half reprints of classic King Cat stuff and then half new material mm -hmm. in like a comic book form, 32 page pamphlet comic or whatever. And I thought, you know, long and hard about it, but it wasn't really something I was that interested in. I felt like I already have that with King Cat, you know. Mm -hmm. And um, then a couple months later, they worked out their book distribution and um, he offered to to publish my stuff. And the first thing we want, did was a, the reprint of Perfect Example. So that came out in like 2005. So I've been working with them for like 15 years now. Yeah, I have that. I have both editions of that. I have the, this is the original yeah. edition with the classic. Look at uh, that cover. What a, <laughs> <laughs> what a weird cover. It's actually what it is, is I'm on tour with Zach and Mr. Mike, and we're, I think we're in Seattle or somewhere on the West Coast, and I'm wiping off, I'm like wiping off the gas, you know, the little yeah. the door to the gas tank with like one of those squeegees that they have at the gas station, because I must have spilled gas on it there. Mm -hmm. but it was like the only picture i had of me or something i don't know <laughs> yeah where did that come from would he have, would tom devlin have found that like in the comics journal or something like that just some i don't know where he found it he might have said like do you have any photos of yourself and that's what i sent him <laughs> <laughs> but hold up that back cover too yeah because it's like isn't there like yellow print on there too? Somewhere? Yeah, there's uh, some kind of, yeah, down here at the bottom, there's like, yeah, I remember it just was like real hard to read and stuff, but that, you yeah. know, that was like one of the first books Highwater did. So he was just like trying all this different stuff, you know? Yeah. And there's, it says something up here on the spine, it says something in yellow, but I can't even make out what it says. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what that's, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if I ever even noticed that. So when, uh, and, uh, yeah, we started doing that. And then um, a couple of years later, we did the King Cat Classics book and so forth. So. And I remember that. I remember when King Cat Classics came out, I was in Denver, like on MySpace and like the, like, the little music scene in, in Denver, like on MySpace was like posting it, like uh, Sarah, what was her name? Sarah, Sarah Slater. Yeah, Sarah Slater. Yeah, she was yeah. like posting it like, everybody oh. should own this book. And I, I went to, uh, to uh um, man i already forget this stuff the name of a tattered cover i went to like uh -huh. tattered cover and picked it up from there and you're like 30 bucks forget it <laughs> yeah was it 30 bucks yeah yeah nice book. yeah yeah but it's so beautiful though man yeah and like with ocd don't you get a little freaked out when you get a book in the mail and it has like a dust jacket and it's <laughs> and it's white and it's like, oh, it's gonna get dirty. Yeah, it's gonna get dirty, or the dust jacket. Oh, I don't have that kind of OCD. Oh, okay. No, I, I know because I know they've talked to me a couple times because I always like they're like, well, what do you want to do for a cover? I'm like, well, like a white cover with like gold lettering or whatever. And I know because the white covers get wrecked, you mm -hmm. know. Um, so I they never really liked that, but I I always kind of wanted it. I wanted to look like one of the French, you know, like association books or something, just oh, yeah. like two colors, real simple, just like an image from the inside blown up. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, kind of plain, but kind of classy looking. Yeah, definitely. But yeah, lots of white. So. And what, what stuff did you choose to leave out of King Cat Classics? Well, there was a lot of stuff that was just crappy, you know? I mean, just... There was no reason to reprint it, really. You know, it, it just didn't go anywhere because I was really experimenting. I, you know, I drew comics when I was a kid and stuff, and I started King Cat, I was 20 years old, but I never really, like, you know, I just kind of 
messed around with stuff. So, you know, those early King Cats, it really was just like trial and error with tons, you know, trying stuff and seeing what worked and what didn't. So there was a lot of stuff that was kind of just not really good. And, but then, you know, I mean, I tried to be thoughtful about it. So there's like some stories that I included in the book that maybe they're not the best comics in the world, but like they kind of showed a new direction or somehow like later in King Cat, there'd be some reference back to that comic or like a similar kind of thing where like it seemed like even though it wasn't such a great comic on its own as part of the whole it seemed kind of worth including you know yeah, so yeah. that's i like chose stuff like that and um trail watch yeah i mean i kept the trail watches out just because I, I i was super afraid of like they're gonna sue me or something for doing this stuff which i'm pretty sure i mean i'm pretty sure it would as as tongue-in-cheek as it was i'm pretty sure it would fall under the category of criticism you know <laughs> but um so i yeah i pulled out stuff like that that like like a lot of the covers were cut and paste things that like a you know picture john fogarty or something you know, a photo i photocopied out of a encyclopedia of rock music or something that you know it's not my photo or whatever so i didn't want to include that kind of stuff that um was you know where i did the classic zine thing of just like find some funny picture in the newspaper and cut it out and stick it in their zine or whatever you know i didn't want to include that stuff partially because i was like real worried about it that i, I was going to run into trouble with it you know and so i mean it was really hard because my ocd was so brutal and it was such a big book it was like it's like 384 pages something i've never tried to do anything like that that complicated and so there were just so many little details that I wanted to get right too, you know? Also, it was just like, this is gonna be my only chance to ever have this stuff like in print probably, you know, and available and I want it to be right. You know, I want I want to do obviously as good a job as I can with the presentation of it and stuff. So, and I mean, I just lost my mind. That's one of my, I've had a couple nervous breakdowns in my life and definitely I had a nervous breakdown over the production of that book. Yeah, it was brutal. But then once it came out, you know, I mean, it's such it's so beautiful. I was really proud. You know, I just couldn't believe it that, you know, a book like that of my stuff. And did you do like a lot of events for King Cat Classics? Because it was like, oh, this is the first big. No, I mean, I don't I don't know that people were even doing that kind of stuff. I mean, I'm sure I did do um, some talks around I I was in Denver by the time it came out we had moved back to Denver I don't remember because I don't think Terry Carver would have anything to do with me at that point maybe they did I I can't remember I'd have to go back Mm -hmm. and look at my my records and stuff but and like I don't even think I had I might have might have by that point I think I was setting stuff up at wax tracks I probably did something like had a release party where yeah. I had bands play and stuff like that at Wax Tracks, you know, in the back room. Yeah. But I didn't, God, I, I, want, I know, you know, what happened was um, the book came out like over the winter, I think of 2006, 2007, and Maisie was really sick. Mm. And so um, I was taking, we were taking care of her day in and day out. You know, she needed constant care. And she finally, uh, when she passed away over the summer i went and did a big tour that fall like went to the east coast and probably went to the west coast i can't remember if i did but yeah so it was i don't know i'm babbling but you know it wasn't like there i don't think there was like any kind of like tour king cat classics tour i mean i did a lot of interviews they set up a lot of interviews with lots of people and websites and stuff like that um but then that like so maybe like that fall after it came out i actually like got in the car and hit a lot of bookstores and stuff like that yeah, yeah i remember when we went on tour for math of my heart it seemed like people hadn't seen you in a while it was like a lot of people were treating you like you just come out of retirement or something it was like a, <laughs> oh hey john wow like it, you know well on math my heart i definitely i went a lot of places that i had not been either ever or in a long time. Yeah, you toured extensively for that, didn't you? Yeah, I mean, I went coast to coast 
Mm -hmm. You know, I did, and I did it in, in batches. So I, I think I did, I did like um, uh, Northeast, like I went up into Montreal and had the book release and stuff and uh, in Canada and then the Northeast, New York and Philadelphia and DC and stuff. And then the Midwest. And then I think that's when I did the Southeast tour was when I, Dan Stafford went with me and filmed everything for the Root Hog movie. Was that Map of My Heart? That was, you were still touring for that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's 2000, Map of My Heart then came out two years later. So 2009, two years after King Cat class. Well, I did some traveling with you for Map of My Heart. That was- sure. Well, and like I said, I think I did stages. So you probably like went with me to the West Coast or something. I went with you to the East because we went to SPX. It was the first time I went to SPX was on that Yeah, tour. but I dropped you off. At, after SPX, you like flew home. I went back something. home. And yeah. I went along, yeah. And then, um, and then, because I think the first part was Northeast, then I did the Southeast with Dan Stafford, like meaning like Florida to Houston and Austin and stuff. And then I, then Dan and I went back to Denver and then I think I had a little break and then you and I went, that's when you and I went to like Seattle and Portland. So we oh, okay. did some, uh, Portland Zine Symposium yeah, and, yeah, yeah. and uh, Hugo House in Seattle. And we went to, uh, remember we went up to uh, Vancouver? Oh, to, sure. Uh, Lucky's. Lucky's, yeah. yeah. Well, that's crazy because that that's more touring and events for any graphic novel I feel like anybody would ever do. <laughs> like, well, it was crazy too, you know, and part of it was, um, I was, uh, I was uh, taking care of Maisie and I was just messed up. And, you know, I mentally and physically, I was really ill. Mm -hmm. And so I just couldn't, I, I couldn't get in a car for 42 days. I just had like something pop up on my, we thought you'd like to share this memory on Facebook. Yeah. Book, and it was a picture of me when I came home from, one of those tours and it was 42 days I was on the road you know and uh I think that was the map of my heart tour because it would have been like yeah, like 10 years ago or something like that and uh and then do, were you with me did we go to LA and stuff like that? yeah we went to yeah. LA and then came back and we did Santa Fe and Albuquerque that's when we did that crazy place in Albuquerque crazy the world's you, best comic book signing would you just contact Ron Quarterly and say, here's where I'm going to be stopping. Like you plan your tours yourself. Yeah. And you have drawn quarterly send the books ahead to them, or do you carry your own books to sell? I carried my own books. I mean, some of the places had, um, you know, depending if it was a large enough place, like a Quimby's or something like that, they'd have books on hand. But for the most part, we relied on just a trunk load of books and a lot I mean the stores like that too because they don't have to order a bunch of stuff and return all the unsold copies yeah yeah right well because we were doing we were signing at stores that were it's like you know they have like a big Hulk mural on the side of the building or whatever uh, like yeah I mean and I was really um I, because I hadn't traveled in so long you know it was like and I was really gung-ho like the idea of I'm going to take this to the people. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. and so, you know, I'd sit with the map and it's like, well, I know I'm going to go from LA to Albuquerque. So like what's in between there, you know, and try to, and, and that's when it got to be like Phoenix comic book stores, Googling it or whatever. And just like looking at the websites and trying to find something that might be, uh, you know, even remotely, uh, uh, you know, uh, work out for a cartoonist like me. And so, um, you know, I did a lot of, you know, I mean, think of all the places like you and I went, mm -hmm. these, like in Albuquerque and Santa, remember that place oh, we yeah. did in Laramie, Wyoming? No, not Laramie, uh, Cheyenne. Yeah, Ernie November. Yeah, Ernie November, you uh -huh. know, so it was just like, I just bug people, mm -hmm. you know, I just be like, I'm a cartoonist and I do signings and you want to set something up, you know, most people, why not? It doesn't cost them anything. You know? Yeah, right. And so, uh, but, you know, obviously as time went on, I, I stopped, it stopped trying to force my foot in the door in Needles, California or whatever, you know, <laughs> just like, we'll just pass that exit. Yeah, you kind of learn your place as an alternative cartoonist, I think. And you're just like, I'm not Yeah, you know, I mean, but on the other hand, like, uh, 
I remember on that tour, I went some places, I mean, like, like Houston, mm -hmm. I mean, Houston's a big city, you know, but like, they don't, and they're just the people who came out to the signing were just like, nobody ever comes to Houston. Like no, you, there no book tour, no cartoonist ever comes here. So it was like a really good turnout and people are really enthusiastic. So like, that's the kind of thing that I got jazzed about, like going to some place where, you know, people are, it's like kind of, it, it's, it's, people are excited. They have to go do something comics related or, or whatever, but you know, it, it, you, you, it wears you out after a while. Yeah. And you can pay, you can basically pay for gas from the book sales of each event or something or what? Probably when I was doing the book tours, I think that D and Q had like some kind of budget for them, you know, yeah. so I kept my receipts and stuff and I, I'm pretty, I'm sure they paid me back for meals and, and gas and stuff like that. Um, uh, so, you know, but yeah, I mean, it's just, it's like being in a band, you know, and that was my, that was my only way of thinking about it was you just like throw the stuff in the trunk and get the map and like drive to this weird town and pull up and set up and see what happens, you know? So it was, it was, it was fun, but I, you know, I, nowadays I'm, I'm worn out. I, I can't do that anymore. Do you think it was helpful to do that kind of stuff though? To tour around as a cartoonist? Uh, well, it was, yeah, it was helpful in a couple. I mean, I, I think it was helpful for me as a person, definitely. I mean, it was a huge thing because like when Mad My Heart came out and I went out, I had been doing King Cat for, uh, what was that? Like 25 years or something like that? Jeez. No. 20 years. Like 20 years or something. Yeah, yeah 20 years. And, uh, you know, I was burned out and I was like my mentally fried. I was really physically ill. And when I went on that tour and got to meet a lot of people, my readers and stuff, you know, who I either had never met or had, hadn't seen in 10 years or something, it was really moving, you know? It, yeah. it, I mean, basically it reminded me of why I do this, which is the reason I make comics is to try to share things with people and like connect with them to make a connection. And um, when I did that tour, the Mad My Heart tour, it, it really drove home for me like, oh yeah, that's why I do this. Like, because there's all these people out here and at this, we have like kind of a little community that is growing up around King Cat. And, and that's, why, that's why I do it is because of those people. You know, and so it actually gave me a real big shot in the arm and just like I, it really like laser focused me after that, where I, I just, you know, it was just like a, like a slap, it was just like, wake up, you forgot <laughs> what you're doing, because I was like on autopilot, you know, I mean, the comics I still liked and stuff, but it was just like my, I was so fried mentally. Yeah, I just yeah. didn't know what was up and down anymore. And it really uh, solidified my like what I want to do and what I'm doing with King Cat and why I do it and how I want to approach it and stuff like that. So, and I'm sure we sold a bunch of books and stuff, you know, and, you know, I mean, I've never had much ambition or never tried very hard to like, you know, twist people's arms about my work. I've always just kind of thrown it out there and thrown it out there again. And eventually if it sticks with people, it sticks. And, you know, I think, going out on the road like that and meeting people and maybe somebody's heard of King Cat and they've never picked it up because it can be hard to find, you know? Yeah. And so maybe they come out just because they like comics in general and they see something in it and it, it clicks with them. So I'm, I'm sure it was helpful, but it definitely for me on a personal level, it was really helpful to go out and, and do that. And all three of those books have been out of print for a long time now, haven't they? Uh, Perfect example has been out of print. I mean, basically for, I, I actually just found, cause I was, I've been like reorganizing all my distro stuff. I found like a stack of, I think I found like two perfect examples and a map of my heart that was like in a box that I had on tour that I just like came home and threw in the closet. Mm -hmm. yeah, they've been out of print for a couple of years or just kind of hard to find. I, I mean, I've had, at Spit and a Half, I still have a couple copies of King Cat Classics. 
it's like D and Q finds them in the warehouse and then they'll call me up and be like, we found six more copies and I'll, <laughs> they'll send them to me, you know? So, um, but they've definitely been harder to get, you know? And um, I think there's a lot of like library copies <laughs> out sure. there on eBay and stuff like that. But um, I mean, my main thing was like, for me, I mean, every artist wants, every cartoonist wants their stuff to be in print and available. But for me, um, it's like crucial that this stuff is available because um, my thing with King Cat is every issue is this like standalone thing. You could pick it up. You don't have to know anything about King Cat, but you could pick up the new issue and read it and get something out of it. But the, it is also true that like the more of it you read, kind of the richer the picture gets, you know? Mm -hmm. And so, I mean, that's been my attitude about it since the very beginning. And, and so for me, just artistically, I want people to be able to pick up the new is issue and like it and then go back and like be able to pick up Map of My Heart or a perfect example, because the more of it you read, the richer the experience gets, you know? Yeah. And so, um, I mean, my... So they were out of print for a couple of years, and then um, Dan Nadell is organizing a huge, like an enormous comics exhibition at the Museum, Museum of Contemporary Art in Chicago next summer. Um, it's like a retro, it's like Chicago Comics 1960 to the present or something. And so there's going to be a, a ton of King Cat stuff in there. And I really wanted... Um, these books to be available no like for that when it happens you know yeah um i want i want people to be able to see that show and go down to the mca bookstore and pick up a copy of king cat classics you know i didn't like i don't have much ambition but i was like smart enough to say like we need to have those be have those books on the table in the bookstore yeah yeah when people see this show you know and so they got dnq got on it and we didn't really have to do much. I think I, I updated the, um, in the back of Perfect Example, there's like a little brief biography, kind of tongue in cheek kind of thing. So I updated that for the past 15 years. And, um, but mostly it's the paperback editions of the first of the, you know, but the content is all this. I actually, I, I, before you called, I stacked them all up. So I have them all here yeah. so I can show you. Yeah, yeah. But they just sent me like advanced copies. So this, like this, if you get all of the, this is like the King Cat collection. This is all of it so far. Oh, it looks so beautiful, all uniform like that. And um, luckily, uh, it's, they're the same size as the Diary of the Mosquito Bateman Man book. So you can stick that one in the middle and it'll look, it all goes together. Dude, perfect. That's so beautiful. So, and we, you know, uh, when we did From, From Lone Mountain, it was a little bit of a different design than the previous ones. And the yeah. idea was, though, it, we did this one with the idea that these forthcoming things, when they come out, they'll have a, you know, they'll have a similar oh, design yeah. motif. Right. So they're, they're all, they're designed to all, you know, to go, to go together. I love that. Oh my gosh. Wow. Yeah. I, yeah. I mean, I know it's really striking. It's different because usually my stuff is just the plain line art and stuff. Well, so that's that's I mean, cool, man. Yeah. So and so this is a paperback edition of King Cat Classics, and um, I guess two of the other difference is that when um, High Water originally did Map of My or um, Perfect Example, they were doing everything they could to make them stand out, you know. So I, that has like purple and brown ink, mm -hmm. and uh, this one is is black and white. Oh, great! Like the zines were, which I yeah. you know I suggested that to them um because it has never been reprinted in black and white the way the zines were you know and i mean i it looks good in black and white i like black and white you know yeah me too so that's a little bit different um but you know they're just they're reprints so they're just they're all going to be available again and makes me happy yeah makes me happy man that's great and they all look really good on a shelf together and stuff they're all the same size yeah this was the first time when I sat down, I, I like uh, tried to put them together in like chronological order. So <laughs> it's not bad for a life's work. Yeah. 
you know, I mean, then I guess you'd have to add uh, the hospital suite and the Thoreau book. Yeah. But those are, you know, those are things that they weren't King Cat books. They were their stand. Arlo. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he's crying because his sister's outside and he's lonely. Okay. Well, I'll, I'm going to let you go, man. I just wanted to talk to you about that for a bit and, and get a chance to see those books first off. So. Yeah, I cool. and uh, I checked I checked the DNQ website and they it says available February. So okay, I'm sure yeah. these were just they rush shipped a couple copies over here and the rest are coming from wherever yeah. they come from nowadays. Well, people should pre-order it, and get their copies. Yeah, coming. so. All right.